morning everyone just a warning ahead i hope i'll be coherent in this video more coherent uh, because i didn't have a good night but yeah on my way to work i thought i'd give you some of my thoughts and observations on the quarterfinals uh, of this year's world cup and maybe some other things that come to my mind and one of those is jerseys and no i'm not talking about jerseys that i want to have jersey matchups and so on although we surely can spend some time on that too and yeah the england jersey is ordered not sure if i will have it on time for the semi-final uh yeah i got a croatia one i want to have an england one so it will come let's um talk about jerseys and i mean ripping jerseys and there is an england connection i don't know if you've noticed i've noticed it in the round of 16 matchup against colombia trippius jersey was ripped right at the color like he made a cut to show a little bit more chest hair <laughs> however you want to call it and then uh, there was um i think it was dele ali who had a kind of not so nicely centered cut, but kind of off center cut also at the collar. Uh, at first I thought this is on purpose, but it really seemed to me that, yeah, this is probably this ripped apart. I don't know if you have any more information. And I don't know if I, if it was in the other, in the England-Belgium game that I saw it, but I, I know I saw it a third time. So um, I thought this was weird. I at first thought this was done on purpose because if it's really cut here down the middle uh, and in England they, with the England jersey they can do that because it doesn't have this weird button that the French have. Um, but yeah, that was really remarkable and uh, you know kind of a little detail. Another one is a potential disaster for Puma again. Uh, back then I didn't see the game because uh, I think we, everyone was showing the other one. Uh, was France Switzerland at the Euros and then there was Albania versus Romania I think that was the one that they were showing on Austrian TV actually which I also found a weird choice but uh, whatever it was uh, France Switzerland that game was remarkable only for two facts again jersey related the one that France had this nice design uh, for away jerseys with one sleeve in red the other one in blue uh, they couldn't wear it because UEFA regulations forbid having different colored sleeves which I am thinking uh, that's a big um, loss for Nike I mean uh, 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 this is a big minus against Nike make kits that comply to regulations I know they are ridiculous I know it is crazy to have so many uh, rules and regulations but at least uh, they are all spelled out such a faux pas should not happen and the other one was that the puma jerseys by switzerland were ripping like crazy um i think a four jerseys if not more were just tearing right in right on camera i mean this is a pr disaster of epic proportions for puma um and in my ever in my ever quest to look for jerseys um uh, old and new I was also hitting classic football shirts and I looked at Switzerland and yeah they have there the Euro 16 jerseys um, and I actually really like the away jersey of Switzerland back then uh, but you know with Switzerland it's, it's almost like with Belgium <sighs> to me it just doesn't really feel quite right to get any one of those I have to look here at the light so uh, excuse me if I'm not looking straight in the camera I'm distracted so um, I don't know for me those two nations Switzerland and Belgium are a little I don't know unheralded blah I don't know why I, I really but I really like both away jerseys for Belgium and Switzerland uh, a lot at the last Euros um, and if you go in classic football shirts and you look at the Swiss away jersey or uh, one of our yeah I, I think it was a Swiss away jersey they have a few there and what they're saying is, yeah, that uh, this was worn at Euro 16, and, it's rem and the remarkable thing is that the jerseys were ripping. And yeah, 
that this will happen to these jerseys because the material used in the match jerseys is a different one than is commercially available for those uh, stadium replicas that they were offering. Why am I telling that? Because a Uruguay jersey was also tearing. Uh, it had quite a big, 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 big nasty tear right on the front in such a way that you cannot continue with such a torn jersey. Uh, and interestingly, everyone at this World Cup is wearing undershirts uh, in, in a similar tone uh, that it at least matches the sleeves, but the Uruguay, I mean, it was an all blue undershirt, uh, which, yeah, is also an interesting, uh, interesting trend in itself that hardly anyone seemingly seems to wear uh, just a jersey. They usually have some performance shirt under. Yeah, so this was my thought on the jerseys. And the other thing that uh, is that I really want to talk about is now not jersey related, of course, uh, is European domination. It is not uncommon that at a European World Cup, European nations perform well. Uh, to me, Russia, yes, it is Europe, but it's probably the least European World Cup. And I also contribute to Russia being the host uh, that the Asian teams did quite well because uh, it's also close to their home. So yeah, but European teams have been doing extraordinarily well. The last time that we had a semi-final with all the European teams was in 2006 when it was uh, Germany, Italy, France and Portugal that uh, made it to the semis. But we already had European domination in a way also in 2010 when yes there were only six European teams that made it out of the group stage and then they had to face each other so we had only three in the quarterfinals but then these three managed to stay on the top so one to three were all European nations and then the remaining the next five were all non-European nations so uh, there is was already that dominance there in Brazil we had again two European nations I mean it was playing South America so you would expect Brazil and Argentina to do well there but they were actually let's see what what, what was the qualifier with Brazil against Columbus or South America was prevailing there we had Germany beating France it was a European duel uh, with Argentina beat Belgium yep so it was four European nations it was not as dominant but, um, but again the world champion came from Europe and the third place team came from Europe and I think it was probably down to the Netherlands having to play a really tough game against um, Costa Rica, unnecessarily long game, um, that they probably were not as fit against Argentina. Uh, Argentina probably was really the better side back then, but both teams were yeah, towards the end of their powers, although I was surprised how well Argentina played Germany in the final. So maybe this South American World, World Cup, yeah, the South American teams got surely an advantage there and therefore um, it was not European dominated, but now we have full on European domination again. I, I think it, uh, out of the group stage we had only three South American nations, if I remember correctly. We had Colombia, we had Argentina, uh, we had four, four South American nations, so Colombia. Argentina, Uruguay and Brazil. We had one Asian nation in Japan and that was and we had Mexico. I almost forgot about no, uh, CONCACAF and I really don't want to forget about CONCACAF. CONCACAF is a region that's always brushed away especially uh, by Europeans uh, and also South Americans to a certain degree. Uh, a little bit due to that Mexico chooses its own isolation I want to say and that yeah the US didn't qual qualify and Panama was probably the team that was the most disappointing the or least least competitive at this World Cup uh, taking all in, in, into account but I actually think that CONCACAF is a much stronger region than everyone gives it credit for and if the US was there I sh it is a disaster that they were not there but if they were there I really think they would have acquitted themselves much better than uh, Panama uh, and even Costa Rica. I think they were would have been, at least been in contention to make it out of the group stage. But I digress. The rest, so we had uh, four, uh, two of those six, so we had ten nations from Europe, six of which made it to the next round, to the quarterfinals, and uh, by the luck of draw, uh, all South Americans were eliminated after first quarterfinal day, and I think this is the earliest within a tournament that only one 
continent remained. Uh, we might have to, ah, maybe I'm wrong, uh, the 34 World Cup was an all European affair, I think, from the semifinals on. Might be wrong there, but I think it was it was back then. But then the 34 and the 30 World Cup, and same as the 50 World Cup, they are their own special kind. Um, they should count, of course, but there were boycotts, there were nations not being uh, either invited or didn't want to invite. So uh, those three I always take with a grain of salt of making those all-time comparisons. Um, to be honest, and I know my Italy heart is a little bit hurting at this statement, for me the first real World Cup was probably 38, but then it really started in 1954. Uh, and since then we have this continuous wave of World Cup winners. But yeah, we have European dominance and it doesn't come as a surprise. It did come as a surprise that Brazil was out, I think. Brazil out this time around was more of a freak result like in 2010. When yeah, they, they, were, the, they were the better team. Uh, in 2010 they actually collapsed after they got the equalizer and this time they got outsmarted with tactics and that was a little bit surprising um, since I think Gigi is a smart coach. We don't know him too well but I, from what I gathered at this tournament he has control of his group, he has a world class squad and uh, he has enough tactical now so that he can actually make a good uh, tournament and shouldn't be outsmarted. Yes, we know Robert, Roberto Martinez is a little bit of a madcap coach. But yeah, it was a little bit more of a freak result, especially the way the game came. Uh, came. Uh, at the moment that you really thought Brazil will now score, Belgium scores the first goal. And it was an own goal, so Brazil did score after all. So that was, uh, well, that was a little bit of an aberration and that played right on the Belgian cards. Yes, they played it very smart, but never in that game. And it was really the game that I wanted to see. Uh, don't get me wrong, I really want Brazil to be challenged. Uh, yes, even at the danger of being eliminated. But it was the game I wanted to see. I wanted, I wanted all that. But I never felt that Belgium was the stronger team. Uh, they were stronger probably going forward. And that probably says a lot about the tactics used that Neymar got um, neutralized and the other t uh, and Coutinho couldn't pick it up and there was not enough grit in midfield for uh, our, for Brazil due to uh, Casemiro's suspension so this the day Belgium took advantage of that right there and then I think they put too many how to say fancy players out there I think and it's probably down to his looks Paulinho is the was the scariest one of those uh, Casemiro is a real classically defensive midfielder old school that just wax it all away has skill but also has the grit that is needed at that position so yeah uh, so for that reason I wouldn't make too much out, out of it Uruguay had a very good uh, tournament uh, that probably could have gone even further uh, there's no doubt in my mind about that so uh, and they eliminated Portugal a uh, European side so uh, that also not too weak. I think it was just the way the draw was set up that you already had only European teams on the lower half. So it, it was clear that uh, if Belgium and France make it through there, they are very strong teams. Um, by luck of, if the draw would have worked out differently, we might have still a Brazil or a Uruguay in contention. I don't think we would have seen an Argentina. Uh, they might. If they wouldn't have played against France the way they played, they might have made it to the quarterfinals. But uh, to be honest, the squad had, didn't have more into it, into itself. And it's also uh, remarkable this European uh, run that it was without three of the biggest nations of Europe. Two of them didn't even qualify, which is the Netherlands and Italy, of course. And then Germany was a complete blank. Uh, complete disappointment so even with that Europe managed to get top four in and if you look at the nations uh, we have three from central northern Europe uh, and let's say northwestern Europe we have uh, France Belgium that are neighbors and we have England so they are geographically all close together and this is now the hotbed of, of soccer 
like it or not, uh, Germany is right in there, the Netherlands are right in there. Sorry, I'm, I'm, my nose is biting me like crazy this morning, so um, bear with me. Uh, this is the cluster of nations that really uh, dominate the proceedings. Uh, now you want to say, yeah, but we had Spain and Portugal that have dominated the Euros. Um, yes, but they didn't start dom dominating until Spain adopted this Northwestern European philosophy from the, from the Dutch play. For me, when I see Spain, I see a lot of the Dutch style that I really loved. Uh, unfortunately, the Dutch uh, abandoned that style in, by 2010. Uh, I, th I think in 2008... They still had some vestiges at the Euros there. 2006, I don't want to say much because the squad just did not live up to expectations. But that is the hotbed at the moment. And if you get a coach from there, then uh, you can transfer it out a little bit. But the way soccer is played is this typically the possession game with uh, passing moves, very much team oriented, not very much star or oriented. Um, now, the, um, some of the nations of Europe that usually can make a dent like Sweden is that they are limited, but they are well or organized. And I actually put Russia now in that one too. Uh, although with Russia, of course, they were running like crazy. I mean, running, 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 running. And you wonder, how can they run so much? Leave it at that. Uh, and then the other one is the street kick, street footballers that got a good schooling very early on from Croatia. They, all, they are the aberration in the semi-finals. But you can feel a little bit more... Um, yeah, I, I should say less. You, you feel a little bit less structure with Croatia. Yes, they are a European team. Of course, they are organized. But there is a lot more... Um, of this Brazilian southern flair to them, uh, which is yeah a little bit more inspiration, a little bit more um, technique, um, a little bit more let's say fair in, in in a way, not the strict tactical concept, and it carried them through the two rounds um, because of their sheer talent. This is one of the most gifted Croatian nation uh, uh, squads in a long time. I mean, if you have uh, the brain, the defensive brain of both Barcelona and Real Madrid, that, that is telling and that should uh, immediately tell you that this squad can do a lot. And it's also that most of these squads have a very solid defensive midfield. Uh, for France and Croatia, I can see this for sure. Uh, Belgium, if they have Fellaini and Witzel playing, I still bemoan the fact that Nangolan is missing because I actually really like this player, but I think he's probably too big of a personality for the Martinez uh, coaching team. But whenever I see him play with Roma, and unfortunately he moved now to Inter, I really liked his play. Uh, he's, he's a crazy character. Uh, no doubt about it, but the way he plays a uh, really powerful, uh, scary midfield player that uh, can also score. He always seems to score the same goal. Just take a volley or just uh, hit it after a uh, drop kick it and it takes a weird uh, and very powerful uh, way into goal. But yeah, they have the defensive midfield. Yeah, and England I think has it too. They are also quite solid and that to me, I keep repeating it. Um, I think that uh, Sven Jorgen Eriksen, when he was the coach, he got the England squad, he got the most out of an England squad out of players that were still kind of this, um, had this working class mentality in them. Most soccer players, uh, Euro European soccer players are not working class anymore. Uh, and when I say street footballers from Croatia, uh, that might still be true, but they get schooling very early on. And in England, there was still this uh, class mentality that soccer is the sport for the working class. And that was, I think, hindering them for a long time. And then uh, you're not, also you're the mother nation, you're motherland of football. So you're not as willing to accept uh, innovation from the outside world. And that always is was booked, was, was, was booked to me with England because they could really 
yeah, the money is there and finally the fruit is showing. I, th I think if England wins the World Cup, they would have won the last uh, three FIFA tournaments uh, where they participated in. Uh, that would be an awesome thing, honestly. I think football is stronger with a strong Eng England squad and I really, really, really start to like Southgate. What everyone was bemoaning about him. I really love that he showed them no uh, that he sh he shows them better now that, and that he is uh, well liked by now. I I'm so happy for that. I mean I re I remember the, the discussions when he became the coach. Uh, what has he won? Yeah, he was, has won the two long tournament. This is the very most prestigious under 21 tournament in the world. Yes, it's an invitation tour tournament, but it counts for something that he he shows and he has a. Um, connection with those young players so yeah yeah I'm, I'm going all over the place I know but you know those are thoughts that are in my head a lot and I was wondering is it such an aberration no it is not European teams are good um, they're probably too good and it's uh, in the sense that they become very similar to each other you either have the really well organized uh, squads with star players where they fight their role and I'm looking straight at France and Belgium in this case they find their role within the team they are well, um, either well coached from a personality point of view like Deschamps or from a technical point of view with Martinez um, and then you have the ones that are a little bit smaller a little bit more gifted and then there's actually the third kind which where I put Croatia in there uh, those are the teams that uh, have maybe a, a little bit more southern, but this is a style that will not, um, you know, I think it will die out sooner or later because they all will want to play successfully like the Germans do successfully. And if they have the talents like the Dutch have and like the Germans do had, I so sure should say for, for, for the Dutch, it can be very attractive to watch too and Spain is the one, Spain was super attractive to watch in its time um, when the passing moves were fluid they were uh, with bite going forward and this was the Dutch style so uh, and that's teamwork 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 soccer is not a game of who has the biggest star it's the game of the weakest link and when it's, once you realize that then you can be successful. The European nations, exactly those founding nations of the European Union, they have figured that one out. And in addition, you need money. And for that, the run of Croatia is even more remarkable. Because Croatia is not the richest country. They are a small country and they produce superstars all along. We can all this... I could not discuss the breakup of Euro Yugoslavia and what a great team was robbed there. Because if you combine all the talent that is in that region now, would have been a superstar squad but yeah it was not meant to be so those are my thoughts and observations and yeah i'm at work better go to work i'll post this soon and i hope to have a match preview for croatia england up sometime today latest tomorrow uh, too as well hope you like this and i will talk to you soon if you enjoyed this video please hit like and subscribe to my channel if you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.